This is Heart Rhythm TV and I'm Ambrose Panico. Today we're here discussing the late-breaking clinical trial, the BioConduct study. I'm honored to have Dr. Larry Chinitz, the principal investigator from the trial, joining us today. Dr. Chinitz, welcome. Thanks for having me. So I'd like to start out pretty broad and just ask you your opinion. What do you think the big take-home from the trial is for our viewers? Well, you know, the world of pacing has dramatically changed in the last four or five years. Uh, the idea of physiologic patient pacing, conduction system pacing, uh, has been very widely accepted. The results are very positive in terms of preservation of ventricular function, improved outcomes. But up until very recently, there really was only one lead that accomplished this, and that was a luminless lead placed by Medtronic, the 3830 lead. But we have multiple companies with multiple different types of leads that could potentially even improve upon our outcomes. So the purpose of the Bioconduct was to be the first uh, multi-center prospective trial to systematically determine whether stylet-driven leads were capable of conduction system pacing, was it safe, were the outcomes similar. Uh, it has been shown in fewer smaller studies, retrospective analysis, that it was feasible, uh, but ours was the largest and the first to really systematically show a positive result. Great. Yeah, I myself have uh, jumped on the conduction system bandwagon as well and have experimented with both luminless and stylet-driven leads. Um, so for some of our viewers who haven't done that, uh, do you have any pointers uh, from your experience, especially with the trial, uh, of how to make the, the stylet-driven leads uh, a, a successful implant? Yeah, well, my personal belief is that the sheath, the delivery sheath, is even more important than the lead. Uh, so that choosing the right sheath and making sure that you are perpendicular to the endocardial surface, judging the curve and the length of the sheath based upon patient size, that's really critical. And if you're able to accomplish that, then it's a pretty easy procedure. Uh, and it actually has some advantages over the luminless lead. One of the most uh, important things for me is that we can pace as we screw in the lead. And by pacing, you could look for little tips uh, in terms of engaging the conduction system. You could watch impedance really closely to make sure that you don't perforate on the other side of the septum. The other thing is that these leads are much more substantial than the 3830. So they're easier to hold, they're easier to manipulate. So once again, if, if the sheath gets you to where you want it to be, uh, then in theory, this could even be a better procedure. Right. Um, as far as long term, do you have any reservations about the larger leads uh, durability or um, let's say for, uh, uh, for instance, uh, extractability compared to the smaller four French luminous lead? Well, you know, one thing that's very important is now you can extract because you can put a stylet down there and you could lock that lead and help with extraction. Uh, the other thing is, is that uh, potentially less of the actual body of the lead is going into the septum and it may be more of the uh, extendable screw. So we have no data, but I would think that it's not going to be harder to extract. Uh, and hopefully it might be a little bit easier. It, right, it certainly offers some, some things we know are an advantage in the world of extraction. Uh, it offers us the ability to use those tools that we're already very comfortable with, as you pointed out. I would also like to say that uh, there is a learning curve, uh, as in everything that we do in electrophysiology, it's really not that easy. Uh, but you know, you have to be very careful that as you uh, extend the helix, that you don't allow it to retract by itself. Because sometimes, as you know, you can get some torque built up mm -hmm. in the lead, and then it goes in the reverse direction. So there were some things that we learned over time, uh, but it's very, very learnable in a pretty right. short period. Yeah, very good, very good. Well, um, anything else um, that you'd like to add from your perspective of where you think the future direction of conduction system pacing is taking us? Yeah, well, I think really the basic things that we struggle is, is what is conduction system pacing, right? Do you have to show engagement in the left bundle? Is it okay to be on the left side of the septum? Uh, what do you have to do during the procedure to ensure that you do have uh, pacing? So when we published, we sent this in for publication, one of the biggest questions by the reviewers are, is uh, the new guidelines would suggest that you have not met the criteria for true left bundle branch pacing. So the European guidelines have just mm -hmm. come out. Our study was designed prior to the publication of that. So what do you need? You know, is it enough to have a left-sided activation time? Is it enough to have a right bundle configuration? Do you have to show different outputs? That, you know, so we didn't really address that, but I think that's going to be the next hurdle. You know, what do you need to do? Right, and I think that that plays a lot into the indication for the pacing, right? If we're talking about a standard you know, AV block pacing uh, indication, then maybe our you know, okay 
end point is, is a certain uh, achievable. Maybe when we're looking at CRT, we need to be a little bit more finite, and I think we still are so young in this that maybe we don't know what the best is and the best option for each individual patient. So very excited about the work you've done. Yeah, I would agree um, with that, yeah. And uh, I'll just say thank you for joining us. Pleasure. Really appreciate it, uh, getting to talk with you about this. Thanks for and inviting And thanks me. for bringing a new thing for us to, to play with in our labs, and we look forward to see where this takes us in the well, future. You know, as well as I do, that's the beauty of EP. We keep reinventing ourselves every couple of years. Exactly, so what, cool. what was new is now old, and what was old yeah. is now new again. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I know that I'm getting older, so that's, <laughs> that's all good. This is uh, HRS TV signing off, and you can follow us on YouTube as well as LinkedIn and any other social media platform.